one by three. A base with a double layer of peaks, three spaces of bedrooms for each person, and last but not least, a base to do great raid defenses with. The one by three. This whole base is done around a one by three starter. It's perfect for a group that's about six men deep, but you can also do it with four. As this base has double layer of peaks, it's not the best against offline raids, although it's very strong against online raids. This base is quite similar to previous designs of me, although it's very unique as well. It features anything you'd possibly need for your active wipe. There's once again a lot this base has to offer that you cannot see or know from the outside. And no matter who builds this base, even though you can't really see what's on the inside, you can't build this base in a lot of different variants, which I will show in the build. I know a lot of you are going to skip through a lot in this video, Although if you're actually going to end up building this base, I would really recommend to fully watch the video beforehand. I would also like to mention up front that this is a very expensive base if you're not playing an active wipe and that this base is also made based around my own experiences. I've used this base actively in the past and I know what you should have where and that's also what this video is about. The idea of the 1x3 was mostly to come up with something different than a 5x5, 3x3 or a 2x2. The original idea started to have a double layer peak down base that's somewhat affordable while still having a core that is honeycombed. You are easily able to honeycomb the core as well, although in this video I won't be doing that. Now this base in particular is very strong against online raid defenses, although it features also a lot of defenses against offline raiders. I know a lot of people are going to watch this video because they're about to raid a base that's like this. And so for most part, I won't be going into it too deep. But one of the main features this base offers in my particular design is that the main loot room is not on the first, second or third floor. It's actually in the core of the base, measuring from top to bottom, but also from left to right. This is a particular strong feature and idea because no matter if you know the base, no matter if you rate it online or offline, especially if you rate it offline, the raiders can rate it from any angle and it always need pretty much the same amount of explosives to get to your main loot. On top of all of that, this base is extremely annoying to online raid as the inner layer of peak downs is a floor lower than the outer layer of peak downs. There's a lot, a lot more this base has to offer, so allow me to give you guys a tour. All right. Now let's talk a bit about this base. This base is not the cheapest, although it's also not the most expensive base you'd build. And once again, just like many of my other builds, this base is purely made for online raid defense capabilities, although it's also made to kind of fool offline raiders. It has a unique shooting floor with nice roof access guarded by turrets and roof peaks. And this base is basically the base you wanna build if you don't know what to build, you don't want to build a 3x3, you don't want to build a 5x5, but you expect to get raided. This base is fully made on top of a 1x3 footprint combined with honeycomb. And the inside, once again, is the full raiders, just like my previous build. The bottom floor, aka the bottom three floors, are basically nothing. Um, the whole main loot room is hidden in the core core of the base, also a lot higher up, right under the shooting floor but right above the main peaks. 
Let me give let me give you guys a tour. There's two ways in. Just like always. Of course I have the multi TCs built. If you enter the base, you enter the outer layer of peaks. You can see classic. We have two ways up. Uh, through the core of the base and through the sides here. Now there's one on each side. So this corner doesn't have one. But then this corner has one again. If we enter the second layer of peaks. You'll notice that they're elevated. They're shifted one floor below. Uh, it's for a couple of reasons. Most importantly it is to not have the peaks on the same floor. So that if you're getting raided and raiders aim to get your peaks straight away. They'll get those peaks. And they would probably expect if it's a double peak down base like this one. To be able to blow one door and have your other peaks as well. In this case, that's not the case. In this case, you won't lose that. And you'll also fool the raiders, of course, as well. Now, this, you can actually fill in entirely if you'd want to. Although, you can also leave it open to save upkeep. So, you enter the base, the core, uh, through one door. Down here is more of like utility. I usually have about furnaces here. Four drop chests in the bottom. And you can shape this or and change this whatever way you like, obviously. We have the main TC of the base right here. Now I say main because we have four external TCs taking over privilege as soon as that one gets destroyed. This one also cannot be looted if it's destroyed unless you destroy one of these metal things. And if you make everything armored, then it's even harder to get the TC loot. So a great way to hide your explosives. Up here we have uh, the part of the starter. I usually have one tier three or two right here. Just can pick them up these days. You'll probably end up having nothing here except just boxes for drop drop stuff. If we go up, you'll notice that we cannot actually go through this gap right here. And that's because those garage doors are placed the wrong way. So if you notice that happening, you have to um, place them the other way with the, with the fat end towards the inside. So there you go. Just fix that. Up here we have the main bedrooms. I call this the core bedrooms. Um, right here we have two with two lockers. And out here we have another two with two lockers. So initially six. And that's the golden number for this base. I would recommend to build this if you're in a six man. If you're in an eight man you can do it. If you're in a four man you can do it. Although you need to be very active because it is a very expensive base. But it's perfectly doable as a six man. Now, if you want to leave the uh, inner core peaks and you want to go to the outer peaks, so to say, to go up this hatch to this armored door, we are in the outer layer of peaks. Once again, everything is segmented. These doors are supposed to be closed. Same goes down there. Just if raiders do get your peaks, they will only get one fourth of the peaks. Now, if you want to go and enter the towards the main loot room area, you have to go up a ladder hatch. If you go up the next one, you'll enter the shooting floor as we are on this height right now. But if we go down here, you'll notice we're coming from this ladder hatch. Now, in my build, in this build right here, you can enter the core in or the main loot room area two ways from two sides. But both through one of this ladder hatch or the one or other one on the other corner. You enter, we have tier two chests here. We have the battery utility room. And if we go through this armor, there's another set of boxes. And as you can see here, we have the main loot room. Now, for extra storage, we have ladder hatches in the floor with a campfire in the middle. Very nice for comfort. Can actually turn them on and uh, stand above here and you'll get comfort pretty nice uh, tier three right here vending machines and if we go down here we have four beds and on the other side the same now this is what i this is basically the second layer of beds this is the beds that will get you straight away into the core if you're getting raided and you spawn here and this is your last resort this is where you'll be now in my case we have two ways into the core so if you're gonna go here we're back at where we came in but if we go to the other side you can see the exact same another way here so they're basically identical now if we go out here and we continue going up we'll go to our shooting floor you can see right here this one can be a little bit tough to go through uh, face that ladder hatch the other way to make it easier if we go up here we are entering the shooting floor now on the shooting floor we have the third layer of bedrooms this is kind of like a common bedroom this is the bedroom i would personally spawn in the most if we're getting raided because you'll have shooting floor access straight away this shooting floor is very similar to the 3x3 design it's basically identical the corner peaks with single doors and then the peaks with the roofs for both down and up if you're taking heli for example this peak is also very nice there's no way for raiders to push through this or well there is a way to get on the shooting floor the classic way to get pushed through here but that's why we have it completely sealed off with doors of course 
if we continue here, we have the roof peaks as well. They had glitch spots. If someone is raiding you from the top, you can peek them here. You can also do that on the other side. And if you want to make it even crazier, you can do the same on this side. Although you're going to need to have your way up to the roof on another place. Go up here. We get, we enter our roof. There's two ways to enter our roof. And then there's four turret pots right here. I would recommend having four windmills. The perfect amount for me at least. I usually split them, um, have them all combined, and then split them over three batteries charging. Uh, and yeah, that is basically the whole base. There's nothing really more to say about it. Um, I love this base. It's something different. It's not just a three by three with double layer of peaks. It's not just a two by two with double layer of peaks. It's a one by three. And ultimately, the original idea came from building something here on the bottom that's actually honeycombed. And then still having two layer of peaks and still being somewhat affordable to build so this right here you can actually place walls and have the main pathway in the center here and then up that way if you're getting raided and raiders blow this right here then they blow this right here they'd blow here they would just start pounding and they'd have to go through another layer of honeycomb aka one two three metal walls to get through of course if they go from the door it's different that's why you always want to make sure your doorways are the most secured. Yeah, that, that's basically it. Three bedrooms, perfect base for six people, and a double layer of peaks. Hidden loot room on the top, quite unique. Um, I just like to have a core loot room that's on the actual core of the base as well. Most people have everything on the bottom floor. Some have them on the top floor. I like to have it like somewhat in the middle. That way it doesn't really matter what side you're getting raided from. It's always like the same kind of costs to get through your main loot room floor so yeah that's basically the base now uh let's jump into how to build this now once again this base is not made to be cheap it's a pvp base it has double layer of peak downs and it's mostly something you'll build if you know you're gonna get raided and if you know you're gonna be active if you're not this base is too too expensive once again just like pretty much all my other builds how much upkeep is it it will be about 41,000 metal a day although if you upgrade more to hqm that number will drop of course if, if you place a lot more doors as well it will also go up as well um so yeah that's basically it for the upkeep so to build this base without all the doors so pretty much without anything just a couple of doors and ladder hatches this base costs about 120,000 metal frags to fully build in metal straight away. Once again, expensive base, but that's the price you pay for an, a base that is very good against offline and online rates. So once again, we're going to start with a starter base. Now in this case, we're going to build a one, two, three squares and triangles on the side. And you want to have your way in right here walls all around now you can alter the jump up although i like to have it right here so we do like this make a roof on top place a door frame and a wall a roof now you upgrade all of this to stone and for the tc i would really recommend to place it right here like that and we upgrade everything to stone and what also would be smart is to place a window at the tc to create a unlootable tc but before you do that make sure you upgrade this foundation right here to metal doesn't really matter uh because you can still do it from the outside but it's a good habit to do so now this right here is what your starter base should look like single door right here jump up to see behind it and the way up Everything is in stone now. Um, I'm going to upgrade everything to metal. And we're going to keep building from metal. Because it's more convenient. No worries. The whole base can still be upgraded to metal. After you've upgraded everything to stone. And built the whole base in stone. So there's not really any places that you can't access anymore in this space. So once we have built the first floor. We're going to build the second floor. Once again we build all the way around. Walls. You're going to want to decide where you want your jump up. I want it right here. So we place a triangle floor frame close the rest off and at this point you don't really need a what's it called a uh, triangle ladder hatch but it would be more convenient for the jump up 
Otherwise you can create a jump up like this in Twig, of course. And for the loot rooms, I would recommend to build something like this. A loot room there with a frame. A loot room here with a frame. A loot room right here with a frame. And if you want, you can also have a loot room right here. With a frame. Frame here, frame here, frame here, frame here. Now, um, you can have your tier 3 right here if you need it. Or your tier 2 now that you can pick them up. It doesn't really matter. Of course, this triangle has to be gone. There you go. That's the second floor of the base. Now, as in this base, the peak downs elevate. Okay, we have double layer of peak downs. The first ones will be actually on the second floor or above the second floor. The other ones, the outer ones, will be one higher. Uh, this is to confuse raiders mostly. Now, to build... To continue the build, we're gonna need to start with foundations. We're gonna have to build the foundation around the base. To build the outer foundations, the whole footprint of the base, we're gonna start at the front door and connect a triangle like this, three of them, then connect two squares. Now you wanna build back with one triangle, another triangle, then a square. Triangle, triangle, square, square. Triangle, triangle, square. Triangle, triangle, square, square. You can see, you can build back here again on the other side and the opposite side is from the door and we can repeat that on the other side as well. So triangle, triangle, square, triangle, triangle, square, square. Triangle, triangle, square and triangle, triangle. As you can see, um, this is the long end, there's two triangles and on the short end, there's actually two. So never mind, I'm just stupid. Um, so yeah, that's basically a footprint. And one thing that you can realize with this footprint is that you can fill it in completely if you want to. Can see i can place all these foundations now later on we're gonna place them but for now just to avoid confusion we're not now you're gonna want to build your inner layer and one thing that you should probably do at this point is decide where you want your doors in i want one right here and i want one right here and we wall that off now we're gonna decide where we want our front door i want one right here and i want one right here the rest we just wall off as well. Now we built that all one taller. So like that and like that and that all the way around. And once you've built everything one taller, we're gonna build everything one more taller as well. On the both outside and inside ring. So these two walls. For the inner layer of peak downs. You can build them on a lot of different ways, although I like to have them the following way. On the long ends, or the short ends actually, do three triangles like this. And here we do two squares. Then from the inside we build, build triangles to the right, like that. That one to the left, so towards the square. You have something like this. Now that's our inner peak down layer. And we need our way up again, so we're gonna have a ladder edge right here. And a ladder hatch right here. And then we close off the roof entirely. Now for the inside here, I like to have bedrooms. And I like to have the bedrooms the following way. Wall right there, wall right there, wall right there. Like that. We can fit two beds in here with two lockers. One on each side. Now we can repeat that same thing right here. With that of course. And walls like this. Then on the inside, you will be left with something like this. Now what you want to do here is towards the... Um, ladder hatch. You want to have a single or a double door, it doesn't really matter. And here you want to have a window. Here you want to have a frame, here as well. Single door, window. Now to fill this up, you can also put frames like that. Um, if you're playing with four people, this is the perfect base, so to say. Because you can fit two beds here with one locker each. And on the other side as well. But although if you're playing with six people, that's really the max, kind of. Uh, you can place another two beds right here in the middle. Uh, it's not very convenient, but it's kind of a solution on the on the short term. But once again, to build the outer layer of peaks, we're gonna build a wall up first, just so we have some protection while we're building. And on the corners, we're gonna do the classic window peak down. So we build like this, remove that bottom, and place a. Actually, I'm. You shouldn't have to remove that bottom. My bad. So like that, remove only the half wall and then place a window like this. Now we do that corner on each of the four corners, so three more. Once you have those on all four corners, we're gonna have to build the inner peaks 
We're gonna do it like this. So once again, just to show you guys, the outer layer of the peaks is kind of on the normal height as where you would expect it, aka on the walls of the fourth floor. Now, the inner layer of peaks, normally on my 3 by 3 would be on this floor as well. But in this case, we're shifting them down one floor. So I like to create a uh, way up first in the corners once again. And then close the roof off, just so our base is kind of more secure. Now one thing that you'll realize is that you cannot really close this off because of stability. As you can see we're already struggling with that. So what you can do is you can build this outer ring. Alright, so once you have this gap, we're gonna half fold it all around. Just on the center part. Like that. And you're gonna wanna have to put half walls like this as well. Now you're gonna put triangles on these. And you're gonna put frames on these like that yeah close that off with a frame on that side and a frame on that side and full walls on all the others once you're done with that you can add a roof like this now i have to say here some people like even more storage than this blue room already offers you're gonna have to leave this roof open put triangles like this and then half all it so that you can have an uh, additional space of boxes around. I like to have the base stronger from the top. So I'm not going to do that. But it is possible to do. So you're going to end up with something like this. A gap like this. And like that. It makes no sense right now. But it will make sense very soon. So once you are in the main loot room. You can go ahead and place walls. The following way. On both sides. Now these will basically be the main bedrooms and you'll be able to have eight people in total here. Two beds there, two beds there and on the other side as well. You'll be able to jump straight into the main loot room. This will be the way out and into the main loot room. So at this point it's probably smart to build another series of walls around. And once these walls are placed around you're gonna want to place something like this. And this center wall doesn't matter what way it's facing. Two floors in the middle. Now you want to do that on each side. Now I like to maximize storage in my base. So you can use these as loot rooms. Although you can also decide to wall them off. Just for strongness, I'm going to wall them off only on two sides and use two sides as loot rooms. So this side right here, where the, enter, where the entrance to the main loot room is, I will wall off. And just to remind myself that I want loot rooms in these, I will put frames. Like that. Now this floor is going to get a little confusing, but again it depends what you want. Same way if you want these to be loot rooms. You can also decide to have two ways into your main loot room. Now I think it's better to have one way into your main loot room. So we're going to put walls like this, walls like that, the same here, same here, except for this part right here, we put a single door. Now, half all that around or close off the edges. And at this point, you can actually completely seal this off, at least for the center. Like that. Now, what you'll notice is that it can be a little bit confusing to realize where the hell are you going to enter your main loot room. For example, if you go from your inner peaks and you go up this ladder hatch right here, you'll notice that you're not going to be able to enter your main loot room at all from this angle. So, if you want, you can play, remove this wall and place a single door frame on this side as well, just so it's completely mirrored. And make sure that the single door frame is away, as far away from that ladder as possible. Same goes on the other side. 
Next up, you're gonna want to decide where you want your way up. Now, for practical reasons, I want to have it as far away from the main loot room door as possible. So we will have it right here. You can make a jump up or you can do a ladder hatch. I'm gonna use a ladder hatch like that. Now, after this, we can basically completely seal off the rest of the roof. And we also want to make sure that there's another way up on the other side. So like that. Now go ahead and seal the rest off. All right, just another thing about this floor right here. If you go down and you see these floors, they are mandatory to be placed. You have to place them in order for the roofs on the shooting floor to hold up. And that is why we have them like that. If you don't want that stuff, you can also not decide not to do it. But I like it like that. It's better for peak downs. It makes your shooting floor a lot stronger as well. And it just looks better in my opinion. You will notice that the whole main loot room floor is kind of open and we'll get back to that in a second. Let's build the shooting floor first. So for shooting floor we have the classic shooting floor thingy again that I've used in my previous bases already. On each corner you build out the two triangles and connect those with a square. That's basically it. You do the same on this side and do the same on all the other sides. Once you've done that, you're gonna stand here and you wanna put a roof, not a triangle roof or a roof triangle, like that. And if you stand on top here, you can place it. Now you do that on each side as well. Your shooting floor will end up to something like this. And I like to start with the outside of the shooting floor and then build towards the inside. So at each roof, you wanna put double door frames. And just to, uh, since the jump up is pretty close to the roofs, I I use full walls right here to close that off. Now, then you want to put windows of your, of course, like that, and a single door frame like that. Make sure it's on the right side from the inside. There we go. Now, you want to put windows on top of the roofs, like that. And you want to put a wall right here and a wall right there. You don't have to put them there, but I just have them so it's stronger. Um, in case people want to raid you from the top, they, they're not immediately from the shooting floor into this door or a window and they see where the way down is straight away. That is also why it's very important to alter your way up and down. You don't want to put it always on the same spots. You can actually put the way up and down, for example, also on this square if you want to. It, that might actually be even stronger, but in our case, we're going to do them here. Now, of course, you need ways to access your shooting floor. So what I like to do is have two single doors like that, like that, like that, and single doors here and then fill them up with a window. Now the reason I don't put just two doors in the corner here is because they can be splashed. Also if that way, um, if, if people are on your shooting floor, you don't necessarily open the door that's closest to this one and you, you're not limited to only a few doors. You have a little bit more options, so to say. So one thing you can do now actually is just completely close off the outer part of the shooting floor. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll end up with something like this. This part of the base is very preference based. Although I would recommend to have another set of bedrooms on the shooting floor. Another thing I would recommend is to not have your ladder hatch access way down. Too close to the shooting floor. So ultimately I'd place a wall here. And I'd place a wall here. Just to force yourself not to build a pathway too fast to the ladder hatch down here. So what do you want to do in the center here? Uh, in my build, I actually have a main room in the middle. Like this. And I have just a common bedroom where everyone has access to. Basically, beds in here, boxes, whatever, completely open. You can also decide to half wall this. Although below here, it's also half walled, as you can see. Now, if you half wall this, it's basically three layers down into your main loot from the roof. So that's up to you to do. Uh, if you do half all that, you'll have enough space here to make another set of bedrooms. So we can actually close off this 
the center and the other corner as well. Now, the easiest way to finish up what you want to build here is to decide where you want to weigh up on top of the roof. I don't like to have way up in the center. I like to have two ways up. But another thing that I like to have is those little roofs that you can peek from. Now, we want to have them on two sides only. So I'm going to decide to put them here and here. And make sure there's a wall there and a double door frame there. Like that. Now make sure there's a wall on the other side too. We do the same on the other side. So place the roofs like that and like that. A wall there and a frame frame. And again, a wall here. I have to say something about these roofs. Um, it's actually important to place the ceiling right here first and then the roofs because the ceiling tends to sometimes clip to the roof. And if that happens, your stability is too low up here to continue on building these roofs right here. As you can see, we cannot, we cannot even build them now, but that's because we haven't placed any floors here. So what you want to do here is you cannot place frames, as you'll see. But what you can do is close this off, close that off. And we can actually close off the rest if we decide where we want the way up. Since we have the uh, roofs right there and there, let's put the way up here. So right here and right here and then close off the rest. Now, of course, don't close off the part where the roofs are. I'll show you how to close that in a second. So you leave this open like that. Right, so to finish the top part, you're gonna need two ladder hatches again. Once again, you can also decide to use jump ups. In this case, we're using ladder hatches. And I like to place them facing the way towards the other square, and you'll see why in a second. Like that. Now for the roof part, we wanna put half walls around and put low walls here, and then close that off with a flat roof, aka a ceiling, and do the same on the other side. You can actually put a wall in between here if you manage to clip that. It is possible to do, but it can be quite tough. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter that much, but I would have it. There you go. Now, you will notice that you cannot place any frames there, although you can place them here. So I would recommend to do that just to segment off this part. Uh, you can also just place a low wall on top of that just to completely split it. As you can see, the wall will be visible if you do that already as well. Like that. It's important to segment out parts of your base. Very, very important. Alright. So, for the roof, let's just finish that first. Put two roofs here. Although, now we can't place them because stability is too low. We'll fix that in a second. So, to fix the stability on the roof, don't go ahead and place frames everywhere yet. We're going to finish the, the actual build of the base first. So um, let's just go back to our main loot room. Right here we are inside of our main loot room. And let's just decide what we want to have here. Now on the bottom, obviously we're going to have boxes. Uh, we're going to have four boxes and then a ladder hatch on top. And I'll show you guys how to build one. It's actually very easy, although it can be a little bit harder when these walls are still metal. So if you're struggling with this, don't place this frame. Leave these whole walls stone. And then upgrade it later and place the frame later as well. Now, if you if you don't want to wait for that, crouch and then place the first box like that. Place the second box like this. Place the campfire if you want that as well. You can do that too. Grab it, put it in and rotate it twice. Clip it as far as you can like that is fine crouch again and now you should be able to place this box and now this one is the toughest one but it should be doable and once again it's a lot easier when you have the frame removed but this one is definitely possible to be placed you just need to have a little bit of patience and if you notice that you cannot place it you just gotta try again if i'm looking right here this box right here is not entirely straight so let's remove that. Let's try one more time. In worst case scenario, you have to pick all the boxes up, remove the campfire, and just try again. As you can see, it is doable to do, even if you have everything already upgraded to metal. And you do that, you do that for all the loot rooms. 
um, all the three at least. Right, so once you have that done, you can place the tier three. And since you can pick tier trees up these days, it's actually a lot easier. What I would recommend is to place this frame right here. Grab a garage door. And then place the garage door, open it. Place the tier three, but place it a little bit more forward than you'd usually do just to be safe here. I'm aligning it with this bottom right here, the bottom of that line. And just to make sure it's straight. And in the middle, I look at the back two poles. See how far they are away from the edge of the triangle. Like that should probably work. Wall like that. Rotate it to your tree and remember to be careful. Because you can accidentally pick it up. You don't want that. There you go. There you have your tier tree. Place two boxes under it. And for the sides here, we can make a loot room. The same on the other side again. And I don't actually have to place that. And on the corner, on this, on the middle here, I like to mirror it. Place two vending machines in that one. Frame, 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 frame. There you go. There you have your main loot room. Now below here, we're gonna have beds. So we can just fill that up completely with frames. And on the other side, obviously, as well. And the reason I'm filling this all up is for stability reasons on the shooting floor. So once you've done that, you'll see there's... A way in right here and there's a way in right here now do you want to, what you want to do here if you have a bedroom I would strongly recommend to half all this like that and then in the center I like to do like that There we go. And you want to obviously upgrade the roof here of the main loot room to armored as well. When you get the right amount of materials. And then you can also go ahead and upgrade the bottom of the bedroom up on the shooting floor. Right here. This room. To armored as well. You don't want anyone raiding you from the top. And that's why these these peaks right here are very important. And that's also why you want to upgrade this stuff right here to armor. Now back to the main loot room. Um, I'm just... I want to have an extra loot space right here. So we can put a floor and then double door frames. All the way until the single door. Do the same on the other side. It's nice to mirror things. Like that. Now in here you'll see there's kind of a room with nothing. You can either decide to just place a wall right here. Fully wall it off. Or you can use this space, space for extra storage or extra loot. What you can do if you want to honeycomb it is place a wall right there. Place a wall right there and a wall right there. We're going to do the same. Exactly the same on the other side. So a wall like that. Wall like that. Wall like that. Two loot rooms right here. We can continue with our frames. This one right here, I, I would probably honeycomb and here, of course, frames as well. So we did the same on the exact other side. And then we have the floor of the main loot room. Completely done. Okay. Frames, walls, everything is, uh, is placed. So if we have full stability on this floor. Now, if we go down one more floor and let me just quickly make it day. Go down one, door fl one more floor on the corner peaks. I like to place double door frames. That's one thing for sure. For the rest, we have the ladder hatch right here. And a nice thing to do here is create a room of that. Just for extra strength. And also stability, of course. And we do the same on the other side. Like that. Now in there, um, you can make a half wall like that. It's very nice. And of course, fill the rest up with frames. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Frame, frame. Half wall frame. So that's the shooting floor done. So another potential upgrade that you can do on this base. As once again, just like many other of my base designs. The core of the base is basically nothing. And the main loot room is above the main core basically. Um, for, for convenient reasons. What you can do is on two corners. 
and I would do the corner to the right of the door. So in this case there and then on the other side that one. And remove the floors from that. Um, to place the floor frame there you actually have to do this of course before while you're building this. So put a frame there. Put the window back. Then with double door frames build up. Like that. And then we should build another frame in the middle here so what you can do here is do like this frame like that as you can see we can place a ladder hatch like that and another one like that and if we go all the way down let's just say you're entering the base from the front door you open that hatch you can go up you open the other one as well Like that. And you can basically get straight up to the main loot room floor. Although, one thing that you have to remember is when you do this, I would recommend to place these ways up from the bottom of the peaks on the corners where there's not a ladder hatch directly above. So in this case, I placed them wrong. This one should be right there. So in our case, the way up, the convenient way up is on the left side now. If you enter these two ladder hatches, see there's not a ladder hatch above. You have to cross the peaks. To the next ladder hatch and for stability reasons i would su suggest to place two double door frames on the parts where there's no ladder hatches as well this way when you get really really rich you can also place like um prison cells here and then garage doors just so you can segment out the inner peaks the bottom of the inner peaks as well now for the bottom here i would recommend on the inner inner peaks to place frames on these squares where there's the uh, ladder hatch and um, for stability reasons that's basically it until the shooting floor okay so for the shooting floor i would like to use the same trick again on the, as on the bottom so single door and the walls like that make sure this one's facing outwards by the way and then the same on the other side like that and not to overdo frames on this base um i would like to do a window here and then frame frame you can see we have a wall here already so just a frame and then frame frame and a window there and the same here and then just to make sure that this is ultra secure frame there and we have a, we already have two here and another one here now we shouldn't have to build anything inside here but if we wanted to we could if we need to we should so simply said one thing i like to have on the roof as well is like turret pots um, basically like a place where a turret can stand under uh, you can do them in multiple ways but what would be nice to do is have them like this of course a roof on top like that so this roof can fit four turrets now to finish this up we put roofs like this and we basically go all the way around although here we need to have a triangle roof now where to have a triangle roof and where not um, basically the best way to learn is by just doing but there's actually a simple strategy for this base that you can follow so let's just say you're starting in this corner right here we put a roof on this one on the corners you always need to make sure that the roof that you're aligning is whatever roof you're selecting so we have a roof here that's for squares and then we have a roof triangle that's for triangles so the triangle roof is supposed to go here the full roof is supposed to go here. As you can see, they will connect. If I don't put a full roof here and I put a triangle roof here, it won't connect. It will just be a Doritos thingy. So, that triangle here, full roof, full roof, triangle here, full roof, full roof, triangle here. And here as well. Now on these, we put two full roofs, and you can see the stability is still too low, we'll fix that in one second. Let's just continue with the rest. Like that. Now how to fix the stability here? As you can see, we have floors right here that are 20, this was 37, 24, 24. Um, what you can do is you can place frames like here and here, here and here. 
And another thing you can do is actually remove this one right here and have a half wall there instead. Um, like that. And now you should be able to place these two. Now for those of you wondering, okay, we can still not place this one. This one's 17, 18, and right here they are 26 and 25. So let's just go and look why. It's probably because this roof, this uh, half wall right here is clipped to the roof. And that's a really, really big problem. If you experience this in your base, you basically need to replace these walls. You can see if I remove them now, place them again, if I'm lucky enough, they should not clip to the roof. There you go, see? 35, 17. So this one's 17, 35. Still not 37. See, so it, it's really, really stupid. But basically, there's no different socket. But if it stacks to the roof, stability from that thing is way too low. And you won't be able to place the, uh, the roofs on top here. But if it stacks to the floor, it won't. So the best way to avoid this is to not place these roofs until the very, very end. And that's what I would do, basically. I would basically... Let's just say your building. Uh, I would leave it open like this, exactly like that, and place the roofs. So place this first, then place the roofs, then place the part in the middle. Put the floors on top. And as you can see, these these as these walls are placed before the roof, they have, they have no way to stack to the roofs, and you will always be fine. So that's basically it for the, for the shooting floor for the top of the base wondering right here you can't clip through unless you have a ladder um so yeah now of course we need to place doors deployables that kind of stuff but overall that's basically the base obviously you're gonna need to put multi tcs on this base if you don't want to get griefed and don't, don't want to lose your base so just to show you guys one example try and go out once again two three four five try and go out uh, walls tc inside window and then once right here we build up as far as we can go like that and there we go we do that on all four sides and you have your tc coverage done as well all right that was it for this one again now if you have any feedback directly to the base build feel free to let me know in the comments you can also join my discord server and chat about base builds in general in the base builds channel now if you actually end up using this base in a wipe and you end up uploading it to youtube please link them to me i'm really curious to see how you guys end up using my base builds and of course if you pull off some defenses with it that would be even more awesome let me know how the base turned out and how it helped you anyways thank you all for watching i hope to see you all in the next video don't forget to join my discord server take care cheers